This is a BC-221. It is an O model. These were manufactured during World War II for calibration source and they sent them all over the place. They must have made hundreds and hundreds of these things. Uh, the diagrams were sent out to different manufacturers and they all made them differently. So you're going to have lots of different models out there. This particular model only has three switch positions. Oscillator, crystal and oscillator together for heterodyne purposes and then you have just the crystal for calibration purposes. This uh, particular model uh, is solid stated. A uh, fellow Ham sent it to me and uh, he wanted to uh, have it solid stated. Uh, he attempted to do it using a 19... 71 article I think it was in QST where some young guys had uh, used some low voltage transistors and uh, were successful in getting it to work with those low voltage transistors but it seems like everybody that has tried it since <laughs> uh, haven't been able to make it work properly um, I'm using uh, 2N3819 s and uh, one TIP 29A for audio output. Uh, these are mounted on plug-ins so there's actually no under chassis modification to be made you simply uh, plug in the modules. Now I'm not sure every module will fit every one of these models uh, there may be some uh, custom work to, to be done to the modules but uh, the modules work on at least two different models that I've tried. I've uh, this is running on 24 volts, and uh, it's pulling only six milliamps. Very low drain. So you could run it on batteries. Uh, I think he wants to run it on uh, uh, three uh, nine volt batteries. That'll give him 27 volts, and it should work just fine. The oscillator is the critical thing. The uh, you ha you have to lightly load the oscillator, so a different transistor will load it differently. If you load it too much, your calibration is going to be off. Uh, this one uh, was done with a compromise. That's the transistor circuit for the oscillator. And it was uh, initially loaded with a 1KC resistor. I had changed that to 1800 uh, because of the calibration. When I did that, the uh, high band on the low end would not uh, oscillate until it was at 20 volts. Uh, going up the scale with the oscillator, uh, it would start to oscillate at a, a lower voltage. So that's the critical part. Um, that's the mixer and crystal oscillator uh, for the 1000 KC crystal. And this is the module for the uh, audio output. Uh, it all works. This is not a critical issue. This is not a crucial issue. This is. But fortunately the FETs have a very high impedance gate. So it doesn't load the, um, the tank circuit very much. But you do have low impedance on the drain and source, and that is what you have to be careful about. That may be the reason that some of you weren't able to transistorize these things and make them work calibrated properly. This particular model only has three switch positions. The first position is oscillator only. That's the main oscillator. The uh, middle position, it says crystal check. Uh, you're running the crystal and the uh, main oscillator together for heterodyne purposes. And then you got crystal only, which you can use for calibration purposes um, every 1000 KC. All of these units are going to have a low and high band, regardless of how the unit is built. Then it's going to have a gain. This one happens to have a power switch. Some of the models don't have that. 
you have a corrector right here so that you can zero beat with the crystal frequencies which are marked throughout the dial. I have it set on the lowest frequency setting which is 125 KC. And according to the book, at that lowest setting, on the low band, I should set the dial at 87 and uh, 0.5. Okay, so I'm at 87. There's the 0.5 on the little uh, extra scale there. And I'm just past the zero on the wheel. So if I... Uh, turn it to this position. That's just the oscillator running. If I turn it to this position, <clears throat> crystal, I can uh, get some heterodyning. <coughs> That's coming off of the receiver. <coughs> and as far as the audio goes, I have a little audio amplifier right here. That is the heterodyning that's coming off of uh, the earphone jack. Now the earphone jack, because I'm running at such low voltage, it doesn't have a lot of output. So I'm using this uh, little extra amplifier. This is the scope. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's pull this off of the tripod and let's see if I can show you that. This is the oscillation on the high setting. Let me go out a little further with it. You see it has a lot of harmonic value right there. Okay. That's just the oscillator by itself. That's the oscillator heterodyne mix. And this is the crystal by itself. Even the crystal has a lot of... Um, harmonic value to it which is exactly what you want and that tank circuit was built for that purpose let's go back to this is on the low band that's just the oscillator this is the high band that's just the oscillator yeah lots of harmonic so when I went from tube to transistor uh, it kept all its harmonic value the tank circuit like I say is the critical thing and that's what you are aiming for so right now it said at uh, 125 and I did have that at one time I yeah, don't seem to be able to get it back. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Had a little problem there. Uh, it is set at uh, 0.125. That's 125 KC. Uh, sometimes when you use the frequency counter, it wants to pick up a harmonic and it may read uh, some other value. But if you carefully attach it, you'll get the uh, fundamental frequency there. So you got the low band, the high band, this is the bottom end of the low band. Okay, um, you've seen it work, so I'll show you the, uh, the conversion. This is the side, and you see I've jumpered the high voltage and the filament circuit together. Because I used the uh, filament circuit in order to provide uh, uh, voltage uh, to one of the modules. These are the plug-in modules. That's one. Parts are just mounted whichever way possible. Uh, this is the oscillator. Only has one resistor there along with the FET. This is the uh, audio module. 
No, this is the mixer. I'm sorry. This is the mixer. This is the audio. And you'll see that I do have a uh, uh, bigger transistor for the audio output because it has to somehow match that uh, output transformer. Okay. This model is uh, built totally different from the next model that I'm going to show you. And by the way, you do have a couple of adjustments for the low and high. They tell you to never move those because if you do, you upset the calibration. When you transistorize it, you will have to do some correction there. So you got to have some instruments that will uh, read the frequency correctly. Let's go with the next model. This is an AK model. And you notice the, uh, the front is different. Now I have one, two, three, four, five six positions on the switch right here it has a low and high a corrector um, the same thing is done with the voltage it's uh, 24 volts tied to the high voltage and filament the modules here are just harem scarum you see the pit parts just sticking in the air because this is uh, an experimental module the guy sent me this just to experiment with and uh, it works also you see everything is mounted differently not anything like the other model now I'm going to show you uh, some diagrams that will uh, help you a little bit trying to decipher how these things work and by the way, you have to have the calibration book that goes with each particular model and serial number. This is model A, model 0. That's an O, not a 0. And uh, there's the serial number, and that goes with the unit I just showed you. Uh, all the calibrations are spelled out like this. If you don't have the book, you'll have to generate your own book using a spreadsheet and whatever materials that uh, you can come up with. That's going to be a long process. <laughs> the first unit I showed you did not have a modulation feature, so you can't hear a tone on your radio. But, uh, you see where the stars are? You can use an external 500 CPS audio generator uh, up to about 4 volts peak to peak through a 0.22 capacitor you can hook them in this place or this place and uh, modulate. Now modulate uh, with a tone having a tone is very nice because uh, you can separate it from any other stray signals you always know where you're at. Now here's the second unit that I showed you this is the diagram for it. I redrew it this is the military this is the military drawing right here tank circuit oscillator audio output look at how they did the switches that is really crappy hard to interpret how those switches work so I took a little time and I redrew the switches there are two wafer switches in that unit And uh, I did redraw them. Okay, this this is just the original. I'll show you those switches. Okay, here we go. Now I redrew the whole circuit and the wafer switches themselves. It has two wafer switches and the um, contacts are on uh, both sides of each wafer. So it took one, two, three, four different. Now this is uh, showing the wafers in the off position. So I use my CAD system to move the switches a little one increment to the warm position. Increment one more time. The position of the switches to show the crystal position 
and there are five positions in all. The reason I did this is to be able to decipher the circuitry completely uh, instead of trying to uh, understand how these switches work. They are correct, but very, very hard to interpret. Another thing you need to know is these units won't work unless you have the phone plug pushed in. And the reason is because of this uh, little switching mechanism right here. It uh, interrupts the 24 volts unless you have that plugged in. So, this is the back to the second unit that I showed you. Um, the main capacitor is under this uh, cover right here. It's a fairly large variable capacitor and it's tied to this uh, wheel and the wheel has the indications on the front. The only thing in this uh, in this device that can control the spread of the dial is that main tuning capacitor. Nothing else because the tank circuit is the same um, in all the uh, I think in all the units and uh, the critical parts have been updated uh, and uh, the only thing left is that large tank capacitor right there. Unfortunately, this unit will not calibrate, and it has something to do with that tank capacitor. Um, I've looked at it. I don't see anything wrong with it. It may have been changed out at one time, but it, the problem is it works, but it will not match the calibration book uh, that was sent with it. Uh, very unfortunate. So it's uh, not very useful for calibration purposes unless I can figure out what to do with it. It is what it is. Uh, these things are old. Uh, they're subject to corrosion, and that may be what's wrong with uh, the big, the big capacitor. I've looked at it and been unable to tell, but I'll play with it a little more. The first unit that I showed you uh, calibrates perfectly up and down the dial, with tubes and without tubes. This one right here, which has the calibration problem. Um, works exactly the same with the tubes or the transistors. It has the same calibration problem, so it is not caused by the uh, transistor conversion. It is uh, caused by something internal to the device, and I, I suspect the big uh, tank capacitor. Okay, um, I'm going to post my, uh, my email at the uh, end of the video. Uh, you can email me if you have any further questions about this thing. Uh, remember, when you work on them, you're going to need a receiver. You're going to need a frequency counter. You're probably going to need a scope. You're going to need a little audio output or earphones. And uh, you want uh, calibration equipment that is uh, precise. Uh, as I say, they sent these all over the place. Uh, World War II. They didn't have frequency counters like this back in those days, so this was uh, the best they can do. All right, signing off. If you have questions, uh, give me an email. Thank you. KV4JT, signing out.